Well, I'm Wally Daboo, and this is the Great British Chef's Signature Series. I've got new qualms in using stuff from all over the globe if, if I like the flavour and I think it's going to be a point of interest for the customer. That love of cooking came from love of eating. It felt like a natural progression to eventually turn a hobby into a career. It's felt like a privilege ever since. The dish I'm making today is a fig leaf milk veil. I think it's a great symbiosis of taste and texture. It's soft, it's velvety. It's a bit like a milk pancake almost, but flavoured with that sort of coconut, almondy taste from the fig leaf. So we're going to make the strawberry juice or the punch that goes alongside this dessert. So dessert, very milky, very lactic. You need that juice to kind of cut through it. So we've got 1.2 litres of uh, boiling water. We're going to add 100 gram of sugar to dissolve. Then some lemongrass. This gives it a lovely sherbetiness. Give it a good bruise. So yeah, by bruising it, you're maximising the surface area, releasing all the kind of essential oils. So lemongrass goes in, then a vanilla pod as well. Gives you some lovely black flecks through the punch and it just softens it a little bit. Gives it a more rounded flavour. Then we're just going to add a little bit of lemon juice for acidity. And finally, some strawberry puree. So for the infusion, you want to give that overnight, 24 hours, so the lemongrass, the vanilla can permeate. And then we're going to pass that through a sieve. And you're left with a lovely, chilled, summery strawberry punch. So now we're making the milk veil, so we start with effectively, it's almost like a, a phyllo wafer. Just slicing the strawberries very, very thinly. We make a mosaic through the really thin sheets of pastry, kind of jeweled with strawberry slices, some flowers, some herbs. Here we've got a sheet of phyllo. It's gonna brush it with a little bit of virgin rapeseed oil. This helps stick the ingredients onto it. So we just take a few of the strawberry slices, place them on top. And then we're going to be quite heavy handed with the flowers and herbs because they obviously shrink as you cook them. Alongside the strawberries, we use some pansies just to give it a bit of a quaintness. Also some marigold, which has got a lovely coriander seed or citrusy taste. The herbs that we use are, are basil and fennel. So you're almost creating a little bit of a still life. It should look like your grandmother's wallpaper. Then we're going to place a sheet of pastry on top. First and foremost, a dish has to be delicious. There's nothing worse than a dish that looks amazing but, but tastes of nothing. But equally, the look of the dish needs to give the customer an idea of, of how it's going to taste. I think every dish has a character, a soul. You know, this is a pretty one. They don't all have to be pretty or, or should be pretty. But I think summertime, you do want that, that colour. We're going to steam them for half an hour in a combi oven, or you can do this at home in a low oven, about 130 degrees with a tray of uh, boiling water underneath. Then we're gonna go in a low oven, dry heat to crisp them, to give them some body. So the fig leaves, one of my favorite ingredients, like slightly bitter almond, coconut, very grown up uh, taste. But it's really important with this, well, with any of the desserts that we do, not too sweet. You know, the, the sugars are seizing. It needs to be a dessert, but we're not looking for a kind of heavy pudding feel. We're just looking to give enough sweetness to lift the dish. So next up, we're going to make the fig leaf milk. So with the milk, you bring it to just under a boil, a bit like making tea, you get less tannins when it's a little bit cooler. Whisk in the sugar, then the fig leaves. First used them in Italy, actually, when I was working in a restaurant out in Florence, they used them to wrap some fish. And, uh, and I love the smell of them. So the fig leaf milk has had 10 minutes infusing. I'm just going to pass that off now. Key for restaurants to get people outside of mundane ingredients, a little injections, things like fig leaf, or it could be osmanthus, or exotic teas, or you know, sweet sicily. We've got some amazing forage ingredients growing on our doorstep, or more exoticism that, that we have access to these days. So. There you have it, the dairy, fig leaf and sugar. Just three things, that's the core of the dessert. OK, 
Okay, so here we have what will be the milk veils. So almost like a stained glass window effect. So now we're just gonna soak these uh, wafers in the fig leaf milk. So handle them with, with care. They take about two and a half to three minutes. So after two and a half, three minutes, what was a wafer is now essentially a very flavoursome, moist pancake. I'm just going to let these drain. Now, I'm just going to trim the edges a little bit just to neaten them. You don't have to do this at, at home. So, plating the dessert here, got a lovely, some lovely porcelain. It's going to pipe just off centre a vanilla caramel. So it's uh, glucose and sugar caramelised with a vanilla cream poured on top. Then here we have a Chantilly cream with a little bit of mascarpone to give it some body. We're going to pipe this on top to pour over some of the fig leaf milk split with a little bit of fig leaf olive oil. Strawberry punch, nice and cool, cut through the dairy. So with this dessert, we simply call it fig leaf milk veil. And when it's served to the customer, all they really get is the vanilla cream, a white on white with the plate. The waiters then come to the table with a fig leaf milk veil. And this just gets draped over the top. So there you have it, the fig leaf milk veil, inspired a little bit by stained glass windows and how the light streams in, picks up all the different colours. Absolutely delicious, I think unique to what we do here.